Hello. In this demo, I will demonstrate how to configure an interceptor in VLAN segregation mode, as well as prove that traffic from two test clients on their own individual VLANs are kept isolated on the path to their respective servers. We will review the steelhead configuration, see how interceptor instances and sub-interfaces are created, and how to verify that VLAN tags are truly preserved as they traverse the interceptor. Although not a requirement for this feature, the demo will be shown with VRF configured on the routers. Before viewing this demo, you should have a basic understanding of how a steelhead intercepts and optimizes traffic, how to configure an interceptor for standard mode, how VLANs work, and finally, a basic familiarity with Wireshark. In this lab, we'll be using two virtual clients inside an ESXi host. Each will be configured with its own VLAN. VLAN 100 and 200, I've also called them red and blue so we can visually see everything on a diagram. A trunk will be leaving the ESXi host into a steelhead, client-side steelhead labeled CSH. That steelhead will intercept on the trunks and will forward that trunk into a branch router. The router will then apply its VRF configuration, send it to a WAN SIM, and back into a data center router. From there, an interceptor will receive that trunk Split out the trunk according to its instance configuration, forward traffic to a switch. The switch will then split traffic based on its access ports and send it to a respective steelhead, either red or blue, VLAN 100 or 200. From this point forward, you have normal outer channel server side steelhead traffic to the servers. Now, let's go ahead and find VLAN segregation under networking, VLAN seg. You'll have to enable, apply, and then reboot. Okay, after the reboot, we can come back and find our VLAN segregation menu item. We see that there is now an instances section, so let's go ahead and add an instance. We'll call it red and add it. Next, we'll expand this new entry and see that its status is disabled with start and stop buttons. Let's proceed by clicking on configure. We now see an instant submenu on the left hand side. VLAN interfaces are basically sub-interfaces to the physical one we're used to dealing with. We begin by configuring a VLAN ID associated to that instance. Once we do that, we can expand this newly added subinterface, which is taking the VLAN ID, in our case 100, and appending it to the interface name. You can now proceed with the usual IP and gateway configuration information that would be required for any in-path interface. Let's go ahead and see what else we have in the menus. We have our steelhead interceptors, which we will not be doing in this demo. We just have our one here. And other steelheads we'll be optimizing too. We definitely want to add a steelhead and put the information in here. And going through the rest of the menus, we have our in-path rules, which we don't have to change anything. We're fine with the defaults. We can go to load balancing rules. We don't need to make any changes there. We're not doing anything fancy. And finally, on the reports, we have our usual interface counters. All right, let's go ahead and enable this instance. Okay, let's review our configuration. From the dashboard, we can see our two interfaces, named red and blue. Or we can simply go to our VLAN segregation menu. Let's start with red. We have our interfaces with dot .100 added to the in-path IP address. We have our steelhead that we just added, and if we expand it, we can see its in-path IP address and its connected status. Scrolling down, we have further information about this steelhead. Lastly, we can view some interface counters.
We can repeat these steps with a blue instance as well. Here we have VLAN 200 and dot 200 for the sub-interface, the steelhead status, and we can click on instance home for a dashboard view that only pertains to this instance. Finally, we can return to the dashboard for a global view of our instances with status, number of connections, and connected steelhead status. Configuring the client-side steelhead is rather straightforward. Just proceed by configuring the empath interface as usual. And in this case, since we're sending a trunk through the steelhead, we're going to add a VLAN tag. I'm going to choose 100 for our client on the red VLAN, VLAN 100, and that will take care of our other VLAN as well. In order to complete the configuration for this client-side steelhead, Please refer to this KB article, which describes the three CLI commands you'll need to enable to complete this configuration. Let's view our server-side steelhead configuration. We begin with steelhead red and review the empath interfaces. As you can see, I've given it an IP address with a gateway of my router in interface on the associated VLAN, which is VLAN 100. Notice that there is no VLAN tag configured here. We can repeat the same for steelhead blue. Empath interfaces, and we have a gateway here that pertains to the router interface on VLAN 200. Again, there is no VLAN tag on this steelhead because the packets arriving on the steelhead are untagged. Okay, let's go ahead and generate some traffic by mapping drives from each client. I'll start with a client that pertains to VLAN 100 and map its corresponding server as well. Wait a few seconds and we have a map drive. Next, I'll repeat this on my other client for traffic on VLAN 200. Under current connections, we can see our two connections for each VLAN. We can see that our client in VLAN 100 ends with dot .100 and our client with VLAN 200 ends in dot .200, so that's an easy way to keep track of which is which. And if we go ahead and expand them, we can see that we are optimizing in full transparency mode and we have reduction. Here I have two SSH sessions open to the interceptor. One will be targeting the red VLAN and the other will be targeting blue. Let's go ahead and enable some debug commands. We're going to run TCP dump and we're going to target VLAN 100 in this window. And in this window we'll be targeting VLAN 200. Now, as long as there's no traffic, we can expect to see traffic only on VLAN 100. Let's go ahead and generate some traffic. This is client 200, and what we're going to do is go to server blue, take these files and drag them down. And so as you can see, there's nothing going on here. We have plenty of traffic here on VLAN 200. VLAN preservation is intact. Let's try the same thing on VLAN 100. This is client 100. Just by clicking on server red, I already have my test files. Plenty of traffic here, but nothing happening here. 
Okay, let's go ahead and configure some TCP dumps using the user interface. So we're under reports, TCP dumps, and you may be familiar with this area. There's nothing new here. We're just going to add a TCP dump. We'll give it a name. We'll capture all IPs, and in this test, we're only interested in traffic that is bound for the data center or the server side. So we'll select LAN 1.1. That will show all egress traffic from the WAN towards the data center. That includes the entire trunk with both VLANs. And we'll just capture VLAN tagged only, but uh, both VLAN and untagged will work. And 30 seconds is enough. That'll give me enough time to generate some traffic and capture everything. We'll go ahead and add. Let's go ahead and generate some traffic. I'm just going to click on server red. And click on server blue that should be enough to generate some traffic returning back to our interceptor we see that we have one TCP dump file created very small file because all we did was browse that directory let's go ahead and open it and see that tags from both VLANs are preserved within that one capture file and here we go. This is my 802.1Q column, and we have 100 and 200 throughout. What we have just seen is by using two separate SSH sessions, we can target each individual VLAN and view its output. VLAN preservation is indeed occurring. Okay, let's prove some VLAN isolation here. I have both my clients' VLANs 100 and VLAN 200, and we can see here the local IP. Let's go ahead and try pinging his server on his VLAN. It should be 24.20, and he can ping him with about 100 milliseconds latency. Can he ping .201? He cannot. Okay, that's expected. Let's go on this side. We have 10, 8, 24, 200, VLAN 200. Can this guy ping his server? 24.201. Yes, he can. He can ping his server. Can he ping the other server? No, he can't. The VLANs are isolated. In order to pass through traffic on one instance, we need to disable it. Let's do this on Instance Blue. Once completed, Instance Blue will no longer redirect packets to Steelhead Blue, and traffic will be passed through. If we look at status for the Steelhead, we can see that its status is currently unknown. Returning to current connections, we can see our connections in full view. We see our connection that is optimizing and our connection that is not. If we expand this view, we can see that it is filled terminated with no state on a path to server. This completely makes sense because instance blue is disabled. Lastly, I think it's worthwhile to look at one last CLI command called debug validate deployment. Let's go ahead and type it in and see what we find. Go ahead and enter the Steelhead's password and wait a few seconds as the interceptor will go out and pull information from the Steelheads. And there you have a full summary of Steelhead Red as detected by the interceptor. Now, during the time of running this command, I disconnected Steelhead Blue, so you will not see Steelhead Blue in this output. We have just seen how VLAN segmentation can keep traffic isolated between two clients on unique VLANs to their respective servers and server-side steelheads. We also saw how to verify that VLAN tags were preserved as they traversed the interceptor before forwarding traffic to the correct steelhead inside each instance.